Hey, Shannon Eller from Both Sides of the Couch, talking to you about sand tray. Sand tray is my absolute most favorite intervention at all. I think once you try it, or if you're already using it, it's very easy to agree with that. Most of the time, sand tray work is uh, used by counselors with diagnosis, for kids that have diagnosis with anxiety or depression, grief, abandonment, rejection, trauma. And the reason that sand tray is such an effective intervention is that clients, even if they're adult clients, when they look back at the trauma or the issues that they've experienced that they're coming to for treatment for, most of the things that happen to them happen to them when they were in a vulnerable state, when they're the smallest person in the room, when they're without power, without courage, without a voice, without autonomy, without connections to other people who could help them. And when you're the smallest person in your world, it's very easy to be taken advantage of. The reason it's so easy to abuse children is that they're small. You can pick them up and take them places they don't want to go and things can happen to them that they would rather not have happen to them. In the sand tray though, and with the miniatures, they are the largest person in the room. The sand tray is contained. It's 24 by 36. It's a contained environment. They are able to use the manipulatives and the met, um, the miniatures, and they're called miniatures because they're small, in a controlled environment, and they can manipulate and control their world and express projectively without language the things that they're experiencing, how their world has looked, how they would like to see it look. It's a diagnostic and assessment tool that counselors can use, and it is a very powerful intervention for you to see the actual in the world of the client that you're working with. If you've not used it before as a counselor, I would encourage you to go to use it and to try. I would encourage you to do your own with someone who can help you process it. If you're a client and you're a little bit concerned or nervous about coming in and doing a sand tray, no one is going to pressure you to do one until you're ready. And the counselors are going to sit back and allow you to express what is yours. We don't want you to build our sand tray. We want you to be able to come together in your body, mind, soul, and spirit and build your own. So having said that, let me introduce sand tray to you. The art of the sand tray, metaphor in miniatures. It's natural, it's spontaneous, it's easy to buy, it's not expensive. It builds rapport, it builds a relationship with the therapist in the room, which is called bridging. It involves the whole person, your sensories, your thoughts, your emotions, your behaviors, your feelings, your actions. It's always successful. How could you do a bad sand track if it's yours and it's what you feel? If your client has done what they experience, it's successful. There's no way to fail. It's safe, it's controllable, it's calming, soothing. People go to the beach, they go on vacation to beach areas because this beach is calming. It crosses most cultural and most language barriers. Nothing crosses everything. It's nonverbal where unspeakable and, un and concealed secrets can be come out into the open. They can be spoken and they can be revealed. And it's a safe place to express trauma or hurt or aggression and let the hidden things come out to be exposed and become real. The, the idea of using sand tray is no different than using dollhouses or puppets or storytelling or family sculpting or art. You're still using the same metaphors and miniatures to understand your inner world as a client or for the counselor to understand your inner world in, um, in the work that you're doing together. With the sand tray at 24 by 36, it has boundaries and it's contained. You can use almost anything that you can find that's small enough. In this particular blog, you will have a list of toy selections for the playroom and it will look like this. You wanna have family toys, nurturing toys, Things that are cross-cultural and cross-gender and cross-ages. You want to have babies and little children and middle school kids and teenagers and young adults and middle aged and older adults. Hispanic, African American, Caucasian, Asian, and Native American. You want people to find your clients to find someone who looks like them. You're also looking for um, toys that are aggressive. So these are the things that I use when I'm trying to express anger. Scary toys. These are the things I'm trying to use when I'm expressing things that make me fearful, like snakes, monsters, sharks, aggressive toys, or things like 
weapons and knives and handcuffs and soldiers, expressive toys, things that in the natural world, things from the pretend world, like fantasy things, witches and dragons, spiritual things, the crosses, uh, the Bible. You want to have enough things across your continuum so that your client has enough to work with to show you what they want you to see. Within that, we also have symbolic meanings in this training of the miniatures. You don't just assume that because it's on this list, that's what your client is saying. If you want to know what this miniature means to your client in their world, simple answer is to ask them. Don't assume, don't go to a list. This is a generalized guide to help you understand, but your clients will tell you if you ask them. So please avail yourself of their own experiences with that. In our blog, we have um, some YouTube videos. We have a sand tray video that we have for sale that's not included in the blog that goes along with this training. Uh, you wanna have treasure chest and jewelry and ice, um, churches and schools and hospitals. All of these things you can find at dollar stores, at Walmart on the clearance aisle, at garage sales. If you need specific things, you can go to the Play Therapy website, to the Creative Therapy store on the Play Therapy website and purchase those things. It's more expensive there, but yet it can still happen. The client loses the activity, uses, the client leaves the activity, the pace, and the interactions. It's an individual process. The narrow, the counselor needs to be the participant witness, the observer. Adlerian therapists and some cognitive therapists will track what their clients do. Oh, you're picking up the blue car. I wonder why you're picking up the blue car. Within their model, that works well. But I found that sometimes children who really need for you to see the blue car, because something significant is connected to that, will put it back if you comment on it. Other children that were just looking at it and had no reason to put it in their sand tray, sometimes will include it because you commented on it. My experience has been that if you're very quiet and just listen and observe and let them mail their own sand tray, you get a deeper, more projective look into their experience and their inner core. So um, it can be a problem solving. It can help with self-confidence, -conf self-concept, emotional intelligence, a sense of purpose and resiliency. Yogi Berra said you can see a lot just by watching. And Young said that we're the participant observers, we're the watchers, and that's where we're at. We want to be sure we respect their inner worth, their potential. Roger said that everyone comes with a potential for healing and growth, and that these activities lead to growth. There's a lot of um, research around brain biology and that neural pathways are recreated by things like music and sports. Santry is also a part of an art activity that will help strengthen those neural pathways and strengthen the focus of your client into the here and now and the uniqueness of your client. You want to be careful to look at the choice of figures that they show, the placement. A sand tray is a rectangle. You have a top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left, and a central core where it's the most important things. Look at the movement and the feeling. Is it a rigid, chaotic sand tray? Is it fragmented, organized, isolated? Does it change over time? Is there a coherent or incoherent story that goes with it? Does it make it right or wrong? It just makes the work that your client is working through, the stages of chaos, conflict, and resolution. So as you enter your client's world uh, and you are looking at their sand tray from their point of view, and actively listening and observing, experience it with them. I think as you use it, it will be uh, an intervention that you will become fond of, as I have, and something that you want to see yourself do. The last thing that will be in this particular workshop on the blog is sand play, world play, and it will tell you how to set up your sand tray. What are the dimensions if you want to build your own? How to process it? This is by Gisela Schubach de Domenico, and her work is well respected in this field. Read her article and get an understanding more so than just this blog of what you want to do. If you're a client and you feel like this would be something you would be interested in, call us at 770-468-7424. We'll be happy to make an appointment and help you work through it. If you're a counselor and you're hoping to learn more 
We have two sand tray workshops, this one and the uh, advanced sand tray. Give us a call. We would love to help you get more well-versed in this intervention and this theory. So we're looking forward to hearing from both of you. Hi, I'm Shannon Eller from Both Sides of the Couch. I want to share with you our advanced sand tray. Some of you have expressed interest in having more uh, training on sand tray work. So the advanced sand tray goes more into the theory and the theorist. Margaret Lowenfeld was Freud's disciple and Doris Califf was uh, Carl Jung's disciple. They both talked about world play. They started working with the children that were um, experiencing PTSD fathers coming back from World War II. Young developed a series of archetypes from which the miniatures are derived. Miniatures go across a continuum of family, nurturing, scary, aggressive, expressive, pretend, uh, natural, spiritual. And Eric Neiman expanded on Caleb's work and he said the sand tray is a diagnostic assessment, assessment tool it connects the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious and all the working parts of the psyche together. It's a very helpful intervention to help clients that have experienced grief or abandonment or multiple foster placements and trauma. Sand is a natural medium. medium it's naturally soothing. It helps to experience, assimilate their experience into the present reality. Sometimes what's happened in the past is an unbearable reality and sand tray work can help that become more bearable and, and bring some of those stories that need to be spoken out into the real world, into the world of the counseling. The emotion can be acted out in gradual degrees and we have freedom for the client to work in as fast or slow as they want to. It helps stuck clients become unstuck and allow for dynamic movement and the client can then get a perspective outside of themselves and have insight insight certainly leads to change spontaneous play as proven out through other types of research cognitive research and uh, behavioral research to be a healthy positive direction for children to go in young defined personal unconscious and collective unconscious with this particular workshop will help you understand both of those and exploring play from a natural medium. Most of the things that are in this workshop are also in the first workshop. Please never assume that you understand what your client is trying to say. Ask them. And don't always just go for what the interventions or the metaphors lead you. Ask the clients. One thing that I developed when I was first doing this is available for you on this blog. Is a sand tray assessment and diagnosis and treatment planning. This worksheet was there for me to remind me to take a picture of the sand tray, to date it, put the client's name, to flip it over and talk about what was in the sand tray, to look for the components and the metaphors. What are my initial clinical impressions and diagnosis? What questions do I want to ask? What references and resources can I bring? What kind of presenting problem do I think I'm looking for? Where am I going with my treatment and my intervention? If I don't assess the strengths for my clients, I have nowhere for my treatment plan to go, nowhere to build. While we know that we have to understand the presenting problem, we always have to look for strengths. If you're a client and coming into counseling, realize that you're gonna have strengths and that here at Brighter Tomorrows, we're gonna help you build on those. We're gonna work at compensating and minimizing the things that are problems. We're gonna work on building to the strengths that you already have. <coughs> Some of the assessment questions. Tell me a story about your sand tray. What's happening? What's the title? What did you, would you like to see not be in your sand tray in future? Who are all the players? Who, what's happening? Who are the people? What do they represent to you? Ask the questions. Some different types of sand tray that you may see after you begin to work is Barrett. As you can see, the entire core of this sand tray is empty. This sand tray was done by someone who had experienced loss and death and extreme neglect and grief. And so when the empty core is there, you don't assume that it's that, but you want to go in that direction and at least ask. 
This sand tray is a scary, aggressive sand tray. The child who built this sand tray did not have anyone helping them. Bullied, living in a very domestically violent uh, and physically aggressive home without uh, family members that were invested in him. Nightmares, bullying at school. We began to work on how to rem remedy some of those and move some of these things out. The sand trays can be dynamic and they can change over time. This one is overstructured, it's rigid. This is a, a sand tray built by an adult male who wanted to keep his family, his job, his affairs, his religious experiences completely separate. And he built fences for those to occur. And as you know, that doesn't stay that way. And when the fences break down, people typically find themselves in therapy. If you're a client experiencing some of those issues or you're a counselor not really knowing how to help your clients integrate all the parts of their experiences, good and bad, Santra is an excellent way to work on that. This one is just kind of chaotic. It's everywhere. These kinds of sand trays you can see in two different situations. One, you can see these are children that are overwhelmed by the amount of toys in the playroom and they just put everything in there because they're attracted to or like it. If you're trying to determine if that's the case, you would go back and have the sand tray in a much smaller room with many fewer uh, miniatures, maybe two or three from every category and see if you get a coherent story from that at that point. The other thing that you can see, which is a sadder issue here, is if a child lives in an extremely chaotic home, a home where meth is being manufactured or a home where there's a lot of domestic violence or neglect, a lot of, you know, cases where defects have been involved. Those children may build a sand tray like this because it represents their real life experience of chaos. So, um, any of these things, you just look and see what you think you are experiencing and dealing with at the moment. This particular one is cohesive. This is a child who was heartbroken over her parents' divorce, but is not traumatized, has not been abused, but just trying to determine where she fits in now at the, in this part of her life. Again, if you're a client in that place, this may be an intervention that would help you sort out your feelings. If you're a counselor wondering how to help, this workshop would be an excellent opportunity for you to gain some skills for these types of interventions. The last thing I want to show you is this article that we have included. It is Processing Sand Tray from Two Theoretical per Perspectives, Gestalt and Adlerian. Adlerian is a great um, family systems theory. Gestalt is a great individual theory in that we can integrate both what is happening individually and what's happening with the community, with systems, and with the family. It's well worth the read. So I'm hoping that this little overview will encourage you as a counselor to check out our workshops and the sand tray. We can give you uh, 12 hours toward any kind of continuing education that you might need across for marriage and family, for LPCA, for uh, social work, for play therapy, for addictions. If you're, a count, if you're a client and you're experiencing any of these presenting issues, anxiety, depression, family conflict, anger, um, abandonment, neglect, trauma, pain, please call and give us an opportunity to help you from a different perspective than just traditional thought, talk therapy. My name is Shannon Eller from both sides of the couch, 770-468-7424.